Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author. Have you ever wondered what to do to dress up your table for Thanksgiving? Well, I have the perfect solution for you today and I'm going to be showing you how to do this. So stay tuned. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, well, what are we gonna be doing this week, right? So if you checked out last week's tutorial, it was a little bit different and I noticed that it didn't get as much um, interaction or interest, but after you see what we make this week, you might want to go back and rewatch that video on how to make a table centerpiece because it's gonna go perfect with what we're gonna be doing this week. So I'm gonna get to it right now. Uh, we are going to make a Thanksgiving table runner. This one is going to be different than the Halloween one because I'm going to be doing a completely different design. This time I'm going to be doing the star. I love the star block and I've made the star block for other people. I have never made it for myself. And this time I'm making it for myself out of some beautiful fall fabrics and I'm super excited about it and you should be too. And then on Friday's video, we are going to make placemats and napkins to go on our table for our Thanksgiving dinner or for any dinner for that matter. It doesn't have to be Thanksgiving. So what I have here is I actually took, used the method from uh, Alonda Craft. She's awesome. I will link below so you can check out her video on how she does this as well. Um, I'm going to be doing my table runner very different than what she did for hers. I just used how to make the block using her method. And um, it's a sawtooth star block is what we're going to make. And you can make these many different ways. Okay, so I made a star block out of a nine patch where I made nine patch here and then I attached another nine patch and another nine patch and another nine patch and it made a big center and then I made the star go out. So this one is going to be different because we're only going to use a five and a half inch square. You can use a charm pack, you can use five inches, that is fine. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to show you all the pieces that I have cut for this. Um, you do not need very much fabric for this at all. I would say um, a half a yard will do plenty. You will have plenty left over for this um, after you make this table runner. And also you will need fabric. You will need fabric for backing and I suggest because of the length of the table runner that you get a yard and a half of whatever backing fabric that you like and then you can cut that in half and it will make two table runners or it can do other projects for you whichever you prefer uh, so I just wanted to give you that heads up I'm going to give you the measurements I will also put those measurements down below in the description box we're going to get started okay first things first uh, what you're going to need is you are going to need five five and a half inch squares. You are going to need 23 inch squares for your corners, okay? You're going to need 23 and a half inch squares that are going to be the same as your corners. And then you're going to need another 23 and a half inch squares of a contrasting color. You can use four contrasting colors, one contrasting color, two, Whatever you want to do, just make sure you have 23 and a half inch squares for contrasting color. Then I went ahead and I should have showed these to you. I'm sorry. These are the five inch, five and a half inch squares that we're going to be working with. These are my three inch corner squares. This is my three and a half inch uh, square that's going to match my corners. This is my three and a half inch square of coordinating contrasting fabric. I have my two inch strips. I have cut four of these. This is going to be the border that goes around 
after we sew all the blocks together. And then here is a three inch border that will go around our two inch border. So we will border this once we're finished. And then I will probably do binding in whatever I have most of left over. Or I will piece it together and do some of this, some of this, just whatever I have, okay? We'll get to that, we're not there yet. All right, so first things first. The first thing that we want to do is we want to take one of our three and a half inch squares that is the same color as our corner, but not the corner square, just a three and a half inch square. And then one of our contrasting squares. We're going to place these right sides together. And I'm going to pop a pin in here. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm gonna do it just to kind of keep it nice and even. So I'm just gonna pop a little pin up here at the top just to hold the fabric together, okay? And then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm gonna go from corner to corner here. And I am using my washable fabric pen. You can use a pencil, a marker, I've used many things. And you're just gonna draw a straight line diagonal from corner to corner. Like so. What you do is you're going to take your quarter inch seam or your quarter inch foot and you're going to place it right here along this line and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down and then what you're going to do is you're going to flip it and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down on this side and when we're finished doing that i will show you what we do next all right so i want to show you how to do this um, it's actually a lot easier if you just mark your fabric um, before you even start sewing it, just have it all ready to go because then you can just put it down on your machine. Now this is what I'm talking about. You wanna line your foot up and go up, down this line. That way you can actually chain stitch. This makes this block go so much quicker when you can do this. Just put them up and just go like that. Then you're gonna raise your needle and your presser foot and you're just gonna flip these around and you're gonna start on the other side. You're not gonna cut your threads or anything like that unless you want to. Um, you, you can, it's a personal choice, but if you just wanna do this and be done with this real quick, this is how you do it. So you just chain, chain piece these real quick. All right, so now that we have that part of it done, we are going to cut in our center right here where we drew our line. We're gonna go ahead and cut right on that line. I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm just going to give it a slice. And then what we have are these two, we're gonna have a square from our half square triangles. We wanna to press to the dark side. I'm gonna finger press that. All right, finger press. I'm gonna do the same thing to that one. All right, so after you have gone ahead and cut these in half, you should have something that looks like this. All right, so I finger pressed this to the dark side already. Now I'm just going to press this with my iron. So that one is now done. And you can see that I pressed it to the dark side, okay? I like to finger press these out before I press them with my iron. It's just a preference. You can do it however you want, is yeah. we have these little dog ears, okay? And we don't need these. We don't need these little dog ears now. So all I do is I come over and I trim it off gonna cut it off and now what you should have is nothing sticking out 
Okay, so this next step is very important before you start piecing the block together. So after you have sewn these together, press them out or cut cut them, press them out. Everything is done with, with your, your squares, uh, your half square triangles. Then you're going to bring them back over to the cutting board and you're going to, oh, there's something on here. I think I just about cut my finger. Um, then you're going to take a ruler, preferably a square one, and we want these squares to be three inches. So we need to square these up because when we sew them, they get a little bit wonky. And in order for it to fit perfectly onto what we're, what we're doing here, we need to trim these. So all I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to line up my line here where it says three. So three inches here, and then I'm gonna do three inches on this side. So I'm just gonna line them up. And I hope you can see that. Let me see if I can get you a little bit closer on that. So three here and three here. So that tells me that I have three inches. Then I'm going to cut off the excess. Okay. And I wasn't holding that very, very well. My shoulder's a little messed up, so it moved, but that's okay. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spin this twice on my mat because I know that I've already cut. Now, if you don't have one of these mats, you're gonna have to kind of turn the fabric and you're gonna wanna be very, very careful when you do that because you want to make sure that you're lined up evenly on one of the lines on your mat or whatever you're working with so that you cut straight. So I'm going to take my, again, I'm going to go three inches by three inches and I'm just going to make sure that I am lined up right here and right here. And so I am and I did miss a little bit when I when I did that, but we're gonna go ahead and clean this up and then we're gonna slice off anything that's extra. And then we have a perfectly squared three inch little block. Now I did go ahead and do these ones as well. So now when I put these together, well, I lost my tip on that one. That's interesting. I may actually, I lost my point on that. Let me double check. This is probably a good thing that this happened while I was showing you how to do this because I was sitting down when I did it. I normally do this when I'm standing. And I didn't get it all the way square so let's make sure that I have this and I'm just going to spin it and make sure that everything looks good so far this is like a little off I may have to redo this one Something's off with my point. This happens sometimes, and sometimes you will have to redo a square. So this square, I'm not gonna be able to use it, and I'm gonna show you why. So, as you can see with these ones, the points are perfect right here, okay? And this one is not. I don't know if I sewed it weird, I don't know if I cut it weird. I probably cut it weird because when I missed. Um, so just be aware of that, that that can happen. And if it does, you just have to make another one. That's, that's the only way around that. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. But for now, I have these that I've already squared up and they're good to use. And I'm going to sew them together and start putting them onto my block. 
All right, so here's what I have done. So I have already put one of our blocks at the bottom of our five and a half inch block. Now I'm getting ready to put our top one on. Now I like to do the top and the bottom first and then I will do the sides next. But this is why we cut these at three inches, each one of these blocks at three inches because it's going to fit on here better. So I'm going to show you here and what I've done is I've just sewn these two pieces together. All right, so I figured out that um, that this color here is the one that's going to make the V shape going down. And then I'm gonna have these two which are going to form the star. But um, you just sew these two pieces together with a quarter inch seam and then I opened the seam and pressed it so that it'll reduce the bulk. So I want to make sure that this V is facing down. So now when I go to flip it and sew it, I'm gonna show you how perfectly this is going to fit on here. Now you're gonna do nice sides together, right sides together, and then you're going to take it and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch down. is straight and you see how perfectly that fits on there now that's because we squared this up we squared this up so it fits on here perfect now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to give it a little finger press and then I'm going to press it out at the iron okay so I want you to notice something really quick here I originally had cut the these 23 inch squares to go in this corner here of our star block. But when I started putting this together, I did not really like the way that that looks because it blends too much. So I've gone ahead and cut some different squares from my corners. You, it won't matter what you cut because just make sure you like what you like and don't be afraid if you cut something and you don't like it to change it because that's exactly what I just did. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I just think this is too much dark. And I really think I want this to be a little lighter. But then again, I don't know. I mean, looking at it on camera, it looks kind of cool. <laughs> so I might use these on, I may alternate the blocks. I may not, I don't know. But for right now, I think I like this better because all I did was cut some fabric that matches the center and I think it just makes the star pop so this is what I'm going to go with on this particular block and um, you know I can always use this these in another project so not all is lost but that's what I'm going to do so here is what has been done already I told you I would show you how to put the sides together so I've gone ahead and sewn the top and the bottom okay so now we're gonna do the sides. So the sides are very similar to the top and the bottom. So all you're gonna do is take your squared up three inch squares that you have, and you're going to bud them up on one of your sides and make sure that it's going in the correct direction. And then you're just gonna put your pieces that you have, your three inch pieces, on your corners. And seem to be having trouble pulling on the corners. So I'm just gonna stick those there. So now we're gonna work on this one. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top one here and I'm going to put right sides together and I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. done 
and I'm going to press this seam open flat just to reduce the bulk. Okay, so there, we got one on here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this bottom one and I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm going to put it on here. Same thing, I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch right down this line here on this side. Right sides facing each other. Okay. Then I'm just gonna, again, flip it open. I'm going to finger press. And now I'm ready for that side. I can now press this out with my iron, which I'm going to go ahead and do. And then I'll show you how we put it on. All right, so I pressed this out and now it should fit perfectly onto our side there. The only thing we're gonna have to do is match up these two seams right here in this corner. And all we're gonna do is place these nice sides together. Now I press this seam flat, so I'm just gonna butt it up in the center of the seam where I did that. And of course, this doesn't want to work with me right now. So, I'm just gonna put a pin there to hold this all kinda together. So, this is where I'm talking about where I have my seam pressed flat open, but this one is not. All right, so you have to butt up the seam here and like I was showing here, I only have, so this one is going in this direction and this one is pressed flat. So all I'm gonna do is try and line up against this one here. Um, it should lay fairly, fairly flat and straight, um, but if it doesn't, then you might need to, to finagle it just a tad I'm just gonna put a couple pins in here just to hold this in place. Um, and then I'm gonna stitch it down. And this is going fairly quickly. Honestly, the most tedious part of this project is squaring up all the little three inch squares. That was probably the most tedious part of this for me, at least anyway. Um, squaring up is just not my one of my favorite things to do, but it's a necessary thing and so it's life. All right, so as you can see, we've got this on and I've gone ahead and finger pressed it and it looks fantastic. All right, so this is what we have as the finished block. So that's our finished star block for our table runner. I'm going to make five, or sorry, four more of these, and then I'm going to put the borders around that I showed you that I've cut out. And then I will take a picture of this once it is finished, and I will show you what it looks like. If you are curious as how, uh, blah, curious how to put um, your so your blocks together and add the borders around your table runner I will link to the video for the Halloween table runner where I go into more detail about how we do those things um, it shows you how to make the table runner from start to finish so um, so that's it that's it for today so um, if you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. I will also put down all of the measurements that you will need for this particular table runner. Um, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe and share and keep on crafting. And I will see you guys next time on The Crafty Author. Bye-bye.